for the entrance. Let us take hymn number 13 on page 4 on the bracing booklet. Father and our Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the coming of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, every time we pick up a newspaper or turn on the TV or radio, we are confronted with bad news, much of it of a very distressing nature. It leaves us numb and helpless. We are in a real danger of being swamped by bad news. Christ came to give us the good news. The good news of the Father's love, acceptance, and forgiveness, which is free to all those who desire it and seek it. Let us open our minds and our hearts to let it in. Today is the third Sunday in ordinary time, and the church invites us to pray for the biblical apostolate that we may truly give importance to the Word of God. And for the times and moments when we have failed to make the Word of God a living presence in our lives, for the occasions when we have not made time to read it and apply it in our lives, let us ask pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, and sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my, my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, to God in, the, in highest, the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he said he would do to them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response shall be, O Lord, make me know your ways. Kindly repeat. O Lord, o Lord, o Lord make, make me, me know, know your, your ways. ways. O Lord, make me know your ways. Teach me your paths, guide me in your truth, and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Your response? O oh Lord, oh Lord, make me make know, me know your, your ways. Remember your compassion, O oh Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. In your merciful love, remember me, because of your goodness, O oh Lord. Your response? O oh Lord, make me know your ways. Good and upright is the Lord. He shows the way to sinners. He guides the humble in right judgment. To the humble, he teaches his way. Your response? O oh Lord, make, make me, me know, know your ways. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kindly stand for the gospel acclamation. Repent and believe in the gospel. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint mark glory to you o lord after john was arrested jesus came into galilee proclaiming the gospel of god and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of god is at hand repent 
and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A person is a subsisting substance, individual, incommunicable, unique, and of rational nature. This definition of a person given by Boethius reminds us that in comparison to other living beings, human persons have rationality. And it is this rationality that enables us to think, reflect, ponder, and make our own choices and decisions in life. Human person, in comparison to other beings that God has created, is the only being, so to say, which is at the heart and mind of God. And that is why in the book of Genesis we read that God created human person in the image and likeness of God. As human persons, right from the time when we get up in the morning till the time when we go to bed, we use words to communicate. Words that help each of us or sometimes doesn't help us in our growth. Words that can help us to build relationships at times destroy relationships. Words which can be encouraging, motivating and pointing to the future. At the same time, words that we use can in a way make the other person's life miserable. Nonetheless, words are part and parcel of human person. But when we compare human words that we use to the word of God, we see a drastic change. The word of God is active and alive. When it is read and assimilated, it can pierce the bones and marrows of our being. So says the book of the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. The word of God is a lamp for our feet. The psalmist exhorts us that when we read the word of God, it should help us to reflect, ponder, and thereby apply it in our daily lives. St. Jerome very beautifully said, ignorance of the scriptures is ignorance of Christ. If we are not able to read the scriptures, whether Old or New Testament, and when we do not comprehend the way by which God has been gracious to the people and in our own time, then we will fail in our desire to become Christians of the heart and mind of God. The word of God, when we read it, assimilate it, it becomes a pathway for our journey. It makes us to become persons who are not just concerned about our own well-being, but invites us to radiate our reading and assimilation into daily lives. In the first reading, we have heard how Jonah listened to the word of God. Initially, he wavered, but later, he took to heart the word of God and proclaimed to the people of Nineveh, and the people listened to his word given by Yahweh. They changed their ways. They put on sackcloths, and thereby transformation took place in their lives. God was very much happy with the way by which the people of Nineveh took the word of God in their heart and mind and repented from their past behavior. In the second reading, we have heard how Paul invites the people of Corinth not to take life 
literally and in a manner that doesn't give glory to God. He invites them that the world that they are living is flitting, is changing. It is not that will last forever, especially in the context of the way by which the people of Corinth were leading their lives. Life of immorality, life rooted on worldly ways. Paul invites them to move from these worldly ways to the ways of Christ, making Christ as a center of their lives. And when we read this letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the second letter, we come across how Paul exhorts them. Paul motivates and encourages them and also praises because in the first letter which we have read or heard today gives us an understanding of Paul's displeasure. But in the second letter, he in a way gives words of encouragement and motivation. In the gospel, we have come across how Jesus goes on doing good by spreading the word of God, by making the gospel as a way of life for him and also for his listeners. <clears throat> In that process, he invites four fishermen to be his apostles, to journey with him and thereby later to make him known to others. They listen to the word of Jesus. They leave everything and follow him. In the spiritual exercise of Ignatius number 104, we come across a grace that a retreatant has to ask throughout the second week of the spiritual exercises. Lord, give me the grace that I may know Christ intimately, that I may love him intently and follow him ardently. Perhaps these four apostles and the others took to heart the word given by Jesus, follow me, and made efforts to know Jesus, to love him, and thereby they were able to follow Jesus, even to the point of giving their life for Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, as Christians, we are very much familiar with the word of God. We are aware of the books which are there in the Old Testament. We are also familiar with the New Testament books. But many a times, laxity and our desire to make the word a living presence in our life seem to take a back seat. Today's readings invite us to make the word as a pathway for our Christian journey, to make efforts that we may truly be imbued by the message that is implied in the scriptures. Three words could help us. The first, courage. We need to take courage to read the word of God. In our modern times, we are so much drawn towards media and communication that we fail to take courage and thereby respond to the reading or assimilation of the word of God. Second, confidence. It is in confidence that we will be able to make the word a living presence in our life, especially believing in what God has given us in and through the scriptures, in making the word of God as a way to lead to God and to one another. And lastly, commitment. To commit ourselves may not be one hour or half an hour, at least 10 minutes or 5 minutes a day to give to the reading of the Word of God. Courage, confidence and commitment will surely help us to make what the words of Jerome are a reminder for us. Ignorance of the scriptures, ignorance is of Christ. If we are remaining to be ignorant, we will not be able to understand who Christ is and the purpose for which he came into our world. As we take part in the celebration, we pray for the graces and blessings that we need, especially the grace to give due importance to the word of God, to read it, assimilate it, and radiate the presence of Jesus to others.
Let us all stand and profess our faith. I believe in God. The Father Amen. Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was, was conceived, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of our sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, human persons we are liable to commit mistakes and errors in our life. And yet God's grace and mercy is upon each of us. With these sentiments, let us place our prayers and petitions before the Lord. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Kindly repeat. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For the church, that it may work tirelessly to bring the good news of Christ's salvation to all people, but especially to the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who make and enforce our laws, that they may be firm, but at the same time kind and fair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have fallen and for those who have lost their way in life, that they may find understanding and love from the followers of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That we may never become complacent or self-righteous, that we may always hear the call of Christ to a deeper and more authentic life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we have placed our prayers and petitions before you. Prayers that we have uttered and prayers and petitions that are deep within our hearts and our minds. Listen to them also. We make this prayer to the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For the offertory, let us take hymn number 128 on page 35. My dear brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be accepted with God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Let us pray. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift to us. Since our praise is at nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the whole world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip Neri, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all gathered over here, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Let us glorify the Trine God together, through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a meaningful sign of peace. Lamb of, Lamb God, of God, you take away, away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Jesus who invites each of us today to make the Word of God a living presence in our life and thereby give glory to God. Happy are we who are called to this banquet of love. Lord, I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say, say the word, and my, and my soul, soul shall be healed. For communion, let us take hymn number 147 on page 42. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. At 9.30, there will be Mass for children and parents. At 10.30, Mass in Portuguese. At 5.30 in the evening, in Konkani for the volunteers. On 27 January, Saturday, anticipated Mass will be at 6, 6 o'clock in the evening. On 28 January, fourth Sunday in ordinary time, the Masses will be as follows. 7 o'clock in Konkani, 8 a.m. in English, 9.30 for the children and parents, 10.30 Mass in Portuguese, and 5 30 p.m. in Konkani. Jesuche Volkitsa Satalo, Ikuntis Ver Janerache, Te Charve Zotir Februarache, 29 January till 4th of February. Walking pilgrimage to Sankwal will be held on 18th February. Those willing to join, kindly give your names to the church office. A retreat for working single adults from the ages 21 till 39, from 26 January 4:30 p.m. till 28 January 1:30 p.m. This retreat will be held at Saint Joseph Vaz Spiritual Renewal Center, Old Goa. PPC meeting will be held on 4th February at 10:30 a.m in the lobby. Last Sunday's collection was 39,817. The Crusaders for Jesus with Mary are having a sale for, Christ, for children books based on the Bible. Kindly buy them. They are outside near the steps. Kindly rise. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in His peace to love and serve the Lord by giving due importance to the Word of God. Thanks be to God. Number 221 on page 69. Jesus is the joy of living, he's the king of life to me, unto him my all I give it, it's forevermore to me, I will do what he commands me. Thank you. 